Hello, I'm Stephen Gilbert. I'm a professor of medical device regulatory science at the University and Medical School in, in Dresden, in Germany. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, an article that's recently been published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings Digital Health. And the title of the article is Continuous Improvement of Digital Health Applications Linked to Real World Performance Monitoring, with the subtitle Safe Moving Targets. And the key takeaway aspect of the article is already expressed within the title. It is how can we monitor the future of digital health apps, which are going to be increasingly adaptable on market and um, increasingly need to be monitored as they change in terms of their safety and performance. The authors of this article are myself, Stephen Gilbert, Andrea Pimenta, Ashley Stratton-Powell, Cindy Beltzel, and Tom Melvin. Um, I'm going to talk through the main um, article highlights. The um, real-world performance monitoring is an important um, it's important to gather real-time high-quality data on the performance of digital health applications, and particularly it's important for adaptive tools, including adaptive AI-based approaches, and um, potentially in the future, adaptive developed apps developed through agile software development processes. Real-world data deliver information for the wider patient populations, which can enable the extension of an application's intended use on the market. Proactive post-market surveillance is an important source of real-world data, but may vary in quality and be subject to uncontrolled sources of bias. Patient reported and clinician reported outcomes and high quality of surveys are important approaches for real-world data gathering and for digital health um, applications. So that's an overview of the highlights of the article. I'm now going to talk through what is effectively a, a visual abstract of the article, that's figure two. The title of the figure is um, the concept of continuous monitoring, continuous improvement, continuous approval, and continuous release of digital health applications, which has been introduced in recent thinking from regulatory bodies. I'm gonna talk through this figure, starting from the, the top of the figure and the, the image, which, is, which shows a, a plot of a, of a graph of, um, of trend reporting of the performance of, performance of an application in, in a figurative sense, and it's titled Continuous Monitoring. So the concept of continuous monitoring is that when an application, a digital health application is released on the market, the manufacturer can carry out assessments on that application with users through its time of use on the market. Um, this is a concept um, that's required in um, world markets and is often known uh, also as post-market surveillance. The manufacturer can use a variety of approaches to gather data for post-market surveillance. And one approach which is commonly used is in-application feedback from application users. Another approach can be the monitoring of complaints, which are made by users of the application. And also a valuable source of feedback can be feedback made directly to the app stores, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store in feedback to the application use. Another source of real world data is the usage statistics on the um, types of users who have downloaded um, the application uh, and in which geographic location those are. Another form of um, data which is relevant are usage statistics, which um, can be obta um, obtained from the manufacturer from some of the um, their internal data or external statistics monitoring um, 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 agencies, which look at app store usage, and those report on the actual usage of the application on the market. Another critical form of real world data can come from social media feedback that can be on, on the common social media sites where um, users of the application give feedback within patient forums or user groups. Other aspects of uh, continuous monitoring can come from patient reported outcome measures, known as PROMs, patient reported experience measures, known as PREMs, and um, also clinician reported outcomes, which are outcome measures reported by clinicians about patients using the applications. Increasingly, there are automated external measurement platforms being developed, 
which can be then used by app manufacturers to report on the performance of the application. A concept which comes from continuous monitoring is the continuous improvement of applications. Here you have a feedback loop between an earlier version of an application um, where, where a manufacturer looks at feedback they've obtained. They bring that through an agile software development process and um, learn from the feedback of users developing the application often in a sprint cycle to, to release later and improved versions of the application. So the continuous improvement process will bring in aspects of interface design and usability and reacting to feedback, aspects of retraining, if we're talking about an algorithm, which is a, a, a machine learning approach, aspects of model refinement, again, within machine learning approaches, and it may involve aspects of refining the intended purpose of the application um, based upon market feedback. Other aspects which will be included will be the fixing of bugs of bugs which are identified within the application and the patching of bugs within the, um, um, the application and aspects of interoperability may be refined based upon real world learnings. Um, there may also be um, aspects of refinement of um, data, data export. The next stage in this cycle is the a process of continuous approval. Now, up until um, recent years, this has been very challenging in regulatory frameworks to carry out. In the idea of continuous approval, um, automated processes as much as possible, or at least highly refined processes, manual processes can be used to um, carry out as much of the verification and validation steps as possible taking as much of these processes away from traditional paper-based approaches and towards automated approaches. A concept which relates to this is the concept of regulation as code, where parts of the regulatory process are actually code um, um, delivered through automated scripts with automated verification as much as possible. This can facilitate the audit both internally and the audit externally by external regulatory bodies. Also relevant here, are the increasing development of um, automated external measurement platforms and testing platforms specifically relevant for um, artificial intelligence applications and also the um, automated assessment by regulatory bodies of applications. Um, these, these approaches are not yet live, but many regulatory authorities and many research groups are exploring the, um, the development of these approaches. The last step in the cycle is an approach for continuous deployment. This is linking the approval process to actually making the application available on market. And this can include um, concepts that, such as differential product release, where different versions of the application are released in different geographies at different times. Um, so differential rollout, enabling safety um, to be verified um, and um, to avoid releasing a new version of the application on the entire market simultaneously. And this can even be linked to the concept of A-B testing, where one version of an application is released and a specific hypothesis is explored through the process of continuous monitoring before it is decided to roll out that version for the entire market. And taken together, this is a uh, an agile process of um, medical device and um, wellness application development, which is has been challenging in the past, according to traditional regulatory environments, but is starting to become feasible under later concepts and the, what is developing to become the cutting edge of approaches that regulatory bodies are um, discussing internally and starting to release in consultation exercises and even in draft guidance. I invite you to read this paper. It's currently available on Mayo Clinic Proceedings, Digital Health, and to, um, to, to look into the other aspects of the article, which I've described in the article highlights, and particularly to study the aspects of, of figure two on the um, continuous processes, which I've described. Thank you.